Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Dina's Ink Inspirations. I wanted to um, follow up on the pan pastel that I did yesterday. <clears throat> this was, um, somebody asked me, they wanted me to clarify the paper that I used. So I wanted to let you know I used the pastel mat palette number five and I used the light green um, pastel mat to do the pan pastel. Um, and then what I've done is I've printed it out, which I actually like um, the way it printed out better than the actual, the original. I think this came out a lot prettier. Um, I printed it out. It's just on a, a regular piece of smooth cover stock. Um, I believe it's either 65 pound or 80 pound. I'm not sure. Um, but it's just something that I've had in my stash and it prints out really well. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. I wanted to show you, you can use this particular picture this way, or you could turn it around and use it this way. So I thought I would do two different pictures using Blue Knight rubber stamps. Um, I also wanted to let you know I did post this on fans of Blue Knight rubber stamps. <clears throat> You're welcome to download this. Um, use it however you want. Alter it, whatever you want to do. Just have fun playing with it. I would suggest that you um, print it out a size 5x7 or um, even smaller if you wanted. I don't think it would print very well and look very well on anything larger than that. So with that said, um, <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do, I was thinking I'd really like to try this ship. This is one of Blue Knight Rubber Stamp's new ones. It's called Ship on the Sea. Um, they don't show it on the front, but they have a little mini ship too that you can use. But I like to test them out on these, I don't know, are they acetate or, or I don't know what they are. What you, you guys can let me know what those are called. But I like to um, stamp things out on these first, and then that way I can see how they're going to look on my picture. Um, I think this would be the one that I would do with it turned the other way. I think that would look kind of nice. So I thought I'd start out with that one um, and stamping that out. I do like to use. Uh, Versafine Claire. That's probably my favorite. Um, I like archival ink too, but I feel like I can get some really good images with the Versafine Claire. So let's just stamp this out real quick. I wanted to start with this one so I could let it dry a little bit um, because I wanted to use some of my Prismacolor pencils. thought it would be probably a good idea to let this ink dry first. So just stamp this stuff out real quick. I usually give it more than one. Of course that one came out pretty good. So. But I'll do more than one anyway. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside and let it dry. And then for the other one, let's see, I thought we would try it the way I had originally done the picture. I'm going to turn this around. Let's see. Wait a minute, I got a little confused there. I think I need it. Yeah, this way. I confuse easily. So um, here's this um, Silhouette Corner Foliage. Uh, this is one of my favorite Blue Knight stamps. I have used this one so much. Um, I thought it would work really well. 
with these uh, flying swans and these are new they just uh, recently re released these I love swans uh, so I thought this would look nice in the in the sky with um, some corner foliage so let's stamp this out real quick I'm gonna give it one more. Um, there's still some areas in there that don't look solid enough for me. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna use the big swans. Make sure I get it the right direction. I don't want my swans going upside down. Although I have done that in the past. Okay, I need to get them straight. Stand up. I can't see what I'm doing sitting down as well here. Oops, sorry about that noise. That's pretty straight. Aren't those pretty? I love swans. I have a whole uh, collection of swans in a cabinet, in a china cabinet. I think I started collecting them when I was in my 20s. And give it a little bit more. <clears throat> I really like the way that looks. And should we put a sentiment? You guys. I almost kind of want to leave it alone. I have this one sentiment um, that I use a lot. This is from their Shoreline set. And it says, The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Um, I don't know. Um... You know what I can do? Let me just stamp it out. <laughs> See if I get it upside down. Nope, that wasn't upside down. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see how that would look. Yeah, I like it. I think I'm going to put that, I'm going to put that sentiment there. So I just, if you guys know me very well, you know that I have trouble stamping my sentiments straight. 
So I am going to use my lined post-it note. Make sure I get it the right direction. Okay, I'll get it as straight as I can. Okay, and as you can see, that's on a tilt, of course. Okay, let's see if I can get it straighter. Okay, that looks pretty straight. Okay, that looks good, I think. I love this sentiment. And there we go. That's one card all done, very quick and easy. And then now I'll go back to my ship. And I just wanted to do a quick coloring on this one. Um, I got out my Prismacolor pencils. I got some different colors, some oranges and golds. And I did get out some grays. I noticed when I printed this out, uh, this area didn't look as turquoise as it does on the original. So I would figure I'd go ahead and go with grays. So this one here is a 30% cool gray. I'm gonna start a little light. I'm just gonna make this a, a real quick and simple. Mm. What I wanted to do is sort of follow the colors that are going on in the paper. And see if I can shade it. Uh, I want to use the same colors that are in the paper. Let's see. Okay, so like <clears throat> right here, this sail right here is behind this sail. See, this one's in the front. So what I wanna do is I wanna shade behind, behind the sail that's in the front so that that way I can give it a shadow and it makes it look like it's behind that sail. And I'm wanting to go darker down here because I got less light. All my light seems to be coming down from this way. So I want to go darker down here and lighter on this side. I'm using a light, light touch. I'm not pressing down on the paper really hard. And that way I have room to layer. If I press down too hard, the paper's not going to take much of the pencils. This one I'm using a 70% cool gray. Mm. 
And I'm just following um, the lines and the, the, it's sort of a guidance of what the artist has already done. I'm just using that to fill in. I'll put a little bit of gray on these. Let's, uh, I think I'm going to put a little bit of the lighter colors, the golden colors here on this. Oh, let's see. This one is yellow ochre. Since I've got this one in my hand, let me go ahead and do some shading in these sails. here. A little darker. This one is goldenrod. <clears throat> I think I'm going to put more gray over there on this side too, on these sails too, so. You can see I'm just following the artist already has the dark the areas here where it would be darker so I'm just following her her design Okay, let's go back to the grays on this side over here. Let's see, let me go a little darker. Back to the, well, do I want 30? You know, I'm gonna go with the 70% the gray. Okay. I'm still going to go a little bit darker. Um, do I want to go to 90? This is 90%. Cool. 
cool gray. Now what I'm wanting to make sure I do is I'm wanting to stay to the very outer um, areas. I probably should have put my glasses on for this. See how that's starting to, to shade this in and give it some, uh, the light, like a light source coming in from the right. It's darker on the left because the light source is on the right. I'm using a really light touch right now because I don't want to go too heavy. Um, if I go too heavy, I won't be able to layer any other colors on top, so. Okay, so now here again, I'm gonna shade um, so this sail is on top of this one. So this sail right here is actually underneath that one. So I want to go darker here underneath. And give it a bit of a shadow. See how that made this, this sail on top of this one? And the same thing here. This one right here, this section, is underneath. So I want to shade that darker. Put a shadow under there. And then again, same thing here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit here. Again, I'm just following what the artist has already done. But by shading the left side of this sail, that's giving me a little bit more movement in it. doing the same thing here I'm giving this shadow so I can put this sail on top of the one that's behind it I'm going to go lighter. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to go to 30%. And just kind of blend it out a little bit.
Okay, I'm gonna go back to filling in some of this. With the gold colors. Normally I'd spend a little bit more time on this. And I would go a little slower, but I don't, makes the videos very long. Let's see how I'm just going in small circles and just blending the colors in. Got these sails over here. Now on this little flag, I'm gonna come in with the, the golden rod and just because it's like got three little sections here. So this one is behind this one. And this little teeny one here is behind this one. So I want to just make it a little darker. To get that one. Get one behind the other. Well, it's not showing up very well, so I'm going to give it a little bit more of a shadow. There, that gave it a little bit more dimension in the flag. So, I mean, you can see what I'm doing. You can get the idea of, of what's going on here. These back ones, I think I'm going to do those in a gray. Um... I'm going to go with 70%. Just fill those in a little bit. Um, and see, I think I'm probably going to stop now because this video is going to get really long and really boring. But just to show you real quickly, I would go underneath with a little bit of black. And then just right up near the, near the line. The black's going to give me just a little bit more, um, dimension. It's going to make it a little more bold. It'll make those shadows show m more, I don't know if bold is the right word. See, I'm just saying, I'm just staying to the real edges of the shadows, where the shadows would be with this black. Okay, but you get the idea, right? So that's coming together. Um, I had a couple more lighter colors. I, let's see, let's see what the, this one is sand. Let's 
me how it works to blend. I had my white out, the white uh, pencil out, but I don't think, I think these really light colors, even this one, um, cream, would be really good to highlight in this particular scene because there's not a lot of white. I mean, it could be either way. You could do either way you want, but. That was, that one was 20% cool gray. I'll go back to some 30%. Back to 90%. See here, let's see, I probably would want to, well, I really should have put on my glasses. Um, I'm going to add a little touch of the gold. So you kind of get the idea there. And I, I get a little OCD about this kind of stuff. I'll keep working with it and working with it. I can keep on messing with it until I get the shading that I like. of the goldenrod down here in the darker areas. And then what you could even do <clears throat> down here in the bottom in the water, so it's the same concept. You want to shade the waves like this right here is in front of this wave. So I want to, I'm using a 90% cool gray and I'm shading behind this wave. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. This wave right here is in the front, so I'm going to shave right behind that wave. Okay, same thing's going on here. And this wave right here is in front of this wave. I think I'm going to put a little bit of the gold in this this side just to highlight maybe a little bit over here this one is the yellow ochre and then I am going to use the white just to exit accent the waves.
I, I would work with this a little more, but I really I keep wanting to keep going and working with it, and I don't want to bore you guys to death. But you get the idea there. So, um, one of the things about this ship that I really, really like is the uh, sentiments from the train tracks that I think go with it really well. I like uh, Miles Apart But Close at Heart or God Never Promised an Easy Road, Just a Worthy Destination. I think on this one, I'm going to use the God Never promised an easy road. I'll just go ahead and finish this off here, stamping. And again with my, my lined paper. tendency to get my sentiments upside down so I have to be a little careful so let's see I'm gonna put it right about there Let's try that. Okay, that's pretty straight. This one you could um, you could cut it down, you could cut the size down if you want. But no, I really don't mind that. I think it looks kind of neat like that. Um, so that's that one with the paper facing one direction. And then this other one with the paper facing the other direction. So I hope you guys will download the the background that I put on fans of Blue Knight rubber stamps. I hope you'll give these a try and um, I'd really like to see. I would love to see you guys try some of these and try some of these pan pastel backgrounds. So anyway, I want to thank you for watching. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, um, I read all of them, so please leave questions or comments. And you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.